Over the course of the week, we've been talking about articulators for spoken language. For example, your tongue, your lips, how they move when you produce sounds, whether the airflow is unimpeded or it has turbulence as it comes out. We're going to do the same with sign languages. We're going to describe sign languages in terms of their articulators. For example, your hands, your fingers, um, the parts of your face. We're going to have those articulators and we're also going to describe their actions. For example, the direction for your palm, uh, whether you're moving down or down, uh, leftwards or downwards and so forth. So we're basically going to do the same thing we did. We're going to observe the motions of articulators and use a system of symbols to describe those motions of articulators. The first thing I want to tell you is that there's no single system. In spoken languages, we have IPA, and that's pretty much what everyone uses. But for sign languages, there's no agreed upon system. There's several of them. For example, Stoko is, has a broader transcription. It doesn't have as much detail. The Hamnosis system, which is the one that I'll show you here, has narrower transcription. These two, by the way, are the first few lines of Goldilocks. And if you want to see the whole story transcribed in Hamnosis from ASL, from American Sign Language, you can click on that link on the PDF of this video. So let me show you an example of hamnosis. The girl there is making a sign from uh, DGS, Deutsche Gebärdensprache, the German Sign Language. And the sign means house. So we have a video of the girl doing the sign. We have uh, a schematic of how the sign is made. And we also have here like a virtual avatar for, uh, of how the sign is produced. As you can see, several stages. Uh, hands like this, hands going down, and then uh, flipping and going downwards. As you can see, two of the diagrams have the fingers pointing ahead, and she also has a variant in the video where she has her hands uh, in a uh, position like this, and then going down. So these are ways of saying house in German. And by the way, very important thing. You might notice that what she's doing with her lips is that she's saying the German word house for a house. That is not a part of the sign. She is mouthing the word. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a version, like a video version of the word that didn't have the German word superimposed upon it. But as you can see, the, the sign for house has a neutral lip position. So saying house as you produce it is not part of the DGS word. It's just because it was I found it in a dictionary. So this is the transcription of that word. Let's go one simple at a time. Hamnosis breaks down a sign into several components. The shape of your hand. For example, you can see that she has her fingers extended, not as a fist. Uh, hypnosis describes the direction and orientation of your hands. It describes the relationship between the two hands. One interesting thing is that you only have one tongue, but you do have two hands. So you have to coordinate the movements between the two. It describes the motions of your hands. Here the hands are clearly going sideways and down. It describes the location, so the sign is in a neutral location around the neck and chest. It's not, for example, to the right of your head. And hypnosis describes the non-manual features. So, for example, if the sign has you puffing your cheeks or doing something with your mouth or your eyebrows. Let's go through this transcription one symbol at a time. The, this one here describes the hand shape. And this symbol is for all fingers flat. So a position like this. As you can see, th these are just a few examples of literally dozens, probably hundreds of symbols. Um, this one means index extended. This symbol here means fist hand. So this one tells you that the hand uh, should have all fingers flat and uh, extended, as you can see there. These symbols here tell you the direction and orientation. So this one means what she's doing there is this one, which is 
upwards, like pointing forth if you're looking from above. This is the one she's doing. Um, if it was just the arrow without this little line, it would be what the other versions of the sign were doing, which is just the fingers pointing forward. So that's the direction, and this one is the orientation of your palm. As you can see here, this would be totally down position, and this would be slight rotation. So that is what both hands are doing. This uh, little tilt here tells you that they are flipping as they move. And as you can see, they are going to change. These symbols tell you the relationship between the hands. This one tells you that the sign is symmetric vertically. As you can see, what this hand is doing, the other hand is doing as well. It is uh, vert vertically symmetrical, I apologize, and the two hands are touching each other as they start. So they start together, there we go, and then, then they separate. We have the motion of the hands, which go, uh, apologies, from this motion of 135 degrees and then turn downwards to 180. The transcription is has no explicit features for the location because it's set in the general location. It could have a descript an additional descriptor if it was made above the head, for example, or on your forehead, or around your teeth. It also has descriptions for different parts of your torso. And as you can see, you can specify a lot of narrow transcription of whether it's left of your forehead or right to your forehead and so forth. This transcription also doesn't have explicit uh, transcription for non-manual features because she's not do, uh, making any of them. She's not moving her eyebrows. She's moving, again, her mouth to say the German word, but that's not part of the sign. Uh, but the system does include uh, details for how your limbs are moving, for what your mouth is doing, and what your face be doing for example whether your cheeks are puffed or whether you puff them gradually whether you suck them in without sucking any air and so forth so this transcription as you can see tells you the shape of your mat of your hand the direction and orientation of your palm what you're not so if you're right-handed your dominant hand is going to be your right if you're left-handed it's going to be your left the symmetry refers to the, your dominant hand executing the symbol and your non-dominant hand following. So if you're right-handed, this is going to mean that whatever your right or dominant hand is doing, your left hand is following and flipped if you're left-handed. And these tell you the motions. This is another example. So this is the word uh, Germany in DGS. The first part of the transcription is, as you can see, index and thumb extended going upwards, and I'm, I have the palm wrong. So these are extended, the sign goes upwards, and the palm has to be completely towards the left. So I start like this. The second part of the transcription tells you that you need to touch your forehead with your index. Again, what he's doing with his lips is saying Deutschland, uh, but that's not part of the actual sign. So that's an example of how you can transcribe phonetically a sign from a sign language. There's no standard way to do it. There's several systems. I showed you just one of them. However, hemnosis is very, com uh, very good for narrow transcriptions, as you can see. It gives you a lot of details. And it uh, decomposes each sign into its hand shape the direction and orientation of your hands, the relationship between the two hands, the motions of the hands, the location on which the sign is produced, and any non-manual features that may accompany it. So as you can see, you describe it in pretty much the same way as a spoken line.